Welcome back to This is Van Color. Tonight, we begin our candidate series for the BC provincial election. We reached out to all the parties to invite any candidate they'd like to talk about any issue they'd like. To discuss the public health impacts of natural gas, we are joined by a professional engineer and a former municipal councillor for the town of Gibsons. He is the BC Greens candidate for West Vancouver Sea to Sky, Jeremy Valeriat. And this conversation is brought to you by Pacific Sands Beach Resort in Tofino, laid back luxury as beachfront as it gets. So Jeremy, is my gas stove slowly killing me? I need to know. <laughs> thanks for having me on, Mo, and thanks for asking. The answer is not today and, and probably not tomorrow. Okay, but so I'm safe. O- over the long term, it kind of makes sense. We've we've totally normalized this idea of cooking with gas indoors, but when you think about it, we're you're burning a flammable substance. It releases particulate, releases a bunch of chemicals, and in the long run, it can cause asthma, it can cause heart disease, it can cause a number of things. It's, it's for kids, it's actually like living with a smoker, and that's really the, uh, Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment. So, wow. uh, y- you can, you know, we don't we don't cook indoors with our barbecues. We don't run our cars indoors. We're burning hydrocarbons indoors, and uh, it has some pretty can have some pretty serious health impacts. Plus, I think since we came up with induction, and you know, the technology is is no longer really needed. I know, so I, but it it's so much nicer on a gas stove when I'm grilling up a steak. Come on, yeah, it's it's uh, the power of marketing mode. They, they, <laughs> this I'm a sucker. Is that what you're telling me? Comfortable blue flame that they've told us is 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 totally totally fine, and it's it is you know has some serious health impacts. And that same marketing savvy has gone into the the gas industry. You know, I tout my scientific background, but I didn't even know that it was methane until mo- almost entirely methane until three or four years ago. So the same marketing savvy is going into denying and delaying climate action. And it's a, they're very good at marketing things that are not great for us. So I'm a sucker, but so is everyone else is basically I'm, what you're saying. I'm just as much of a sucker as anybody. I thought gas <laughs> stoves were great until we started seeing the data coming out. And that's what the Greens do is look at the evidence and, and, and say, uh, so, you know, it's not being a sucker. It's just there are health risks to a lot of things that we do and risk factors. And uh, and this is one of them for cooking with gas. Now, on a larger scale, let's talk about natural gas extraction and its impact on public health. So we've talked about the home, but let's talk about the province in general. Yeah. What are the health risks? Yeah, great. So let's start with fracking where they're getting taking the gas out of the ground. And I'm a geological engineer, so I know a little bit about it. Um, they're they're pumping water, you know, clean water and a bunch of chemicals into the ground. And what comes out at the other end is very contaminated water. And uh, it causes a number, a number of asthma, heart heart disease. It can cause leukemia. And having, uh, you know, cared for my two-year-old daughter through leukemia, I can say that the that we should we should be who looking is being at affected the people at the site people, yeah. or the communities Pe- people in northeastern BC okay. are the ones being affected by fracking so then it gets piped all the way down to the lower mainland uh, you know leaking methane all all the way which is a very potent greenhouse gas and then they will liquefy it to ship it uh, across the Pacific so part of that liquefying is flaring so you can imagine you're it's basically the same as a gas stove in a in a home except a a massive flare on an an atmospheric level so Hmm. they're pumping the same you know volatile organic hydrocarbons and 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 phs and and other particulate into the into our air shed uh, particularly you know the squamish air shed is is a confined house and air shed and uh, so it's, it's essentially the same thing on a, on a on a global scale now is there any evidence either in our jurisdiction here in bc or from other jurisdictions that indeed health outcomes end up being worse because of this natural gas infrastructure yes and that's that's one of the things that is being studied right now so the texas gulf coast is a is a, a huge place for natural or lng export at tip mostly un, unpopulated compared to what we've got in, in Howe Sound and Squamish and, and Britannia Bay, um, Britannia Beach. Uh, they found preterm birth. They found low birth weight. Uh, they, f- they found, uh, you know, potentially uh, asthma and other uh, other heart disease and lung disease it, close to uh, li- close to liquefying plants, close to where these flares are flaring wow. gas. And so that uh, hasn't been studied in Canada. You know, they approved the project, you know, potentially even before this was known, but n- new science is coming out all the time. These are rel- This LNG export is relatively new. Uh, over the last, you know, decade or so, it's become a, a you know, big source of, of industry. And so uh, they're finding 
more and more data about it and and we'll find and there's a study going on right now to find out what impact it could have on on how sound airshed now before we get to your party's platform to address this what do you say to people who say actually lng is great for the environment because when we export it it's going to go to countries who are going to replace coal-fired plants and use lng instead and that's cleaner that sounds like such a great argument and it's i mean i'm a sucker for that argument well it's the same marketing board that brought (laughs) (laughs) that brought you the, the comforting blue flame that might have been true 20 years ago. It might have displaced some coal. Um, it is purely marketing. It's been thoroughly debunked. China is bringing on solar power in the hundreds of gigawatts way faster than, than we are. They do not need our LNG. We're exporting it for the profit of very few people, uh, exporting it to a country that, that will use it, but not necessarily over coal, potentially mm. over renewables. Uh, and it's a it's a broken it's a it's a broken argument that's that's obsolete and uh, and it, it it's for it's a profitable business. Now, aside from ripping out my gas powered stove from my home, what is the BC Greens platform when it comes to natural gas, considering all these health risks? Yeah, so uh, I, I'm. A, I'm an engineer. I'm a pragmatist. I'm not saying everybody has to rip out their their <laughs> gas stoves. It, it's valuable as a backup in some cases, especially in the north where it can be very cold. I mean, mm-hmm. we all, gas furnaces still don't work in a power outages in a power outage, but um, you know, it, it has some value domestically. Uh, we will. We do need to transition over to cleaner cleaner fuels and, and renewable sources of electricity. But you know, we know we all know we're going to go through this energy transition. It's it's very apparent, you know, all, all the science says climate change needs to be addressed or we are in big, big trouble. So um, we just, to encourage that transition, we just don't, sh- we shouldn't be investing and we shouldn't be subsidizing any more fossil fuel infrastructure in BC. And that's a that's a really simple platform piece that the Greens have been talking about for some time. Uh, don't build any new plants. You know, the ones that exist will will phase out over time and we'll bring on renewables. And, uh, and it's pretty straightforward given the, the climate scientists are saying this this needs to happen. And so to be really clear, you're not going to ban natural gas throughout the province there's, if you were to make be government. No, there's no there's no <laughs> there's no banning. I mean, yes, new buildings are being built without gas hookups and those at the, a lot of those are municipal rules, but mm-hmm. we're you know, we're not in the business of banning and telling people that they're they're bad because they're doing the wrong thing. The system is built to help people uh, you know, create carbon emissions and we need to change that system so that people uh it's you know not so they have to make the decision on their own or fear be shamed or guilted into it but so that the system just generally like allows that to happen it becomes normalized to have a heat pump and it mm-hmm. you know it ends up being cheaper for people and better for the for the climate and the environment well jeremy i appreciate your time tonight thanks for telling me that i was wrong about my <laughs> natural gas stove this whole time and good luck we're, on the campaign we're trail all consumers subject to marketing tech. we absolutely are <laughs> thank you so much thanks Mo. great to talk to you Folks, that was the BC Greens candidate for West Vancouver Sea to Sky, Jeremy Valeriot. Thank you so much to Pacific Sands Beach Resort in Tofino for supporting local conversations about local issues. Now, after some business, imagine your friend is running to be an MLA. And on Tuesday, they ask for a donation to their campaign. So that night, you give them $1,400. Then on Wednesday, your friend's political party, unbeknownst to your friend, suspends their campaign. What did you just donate to? Do you have any legal recourse to get your money back? Kyla Lee has answers up next.